President Joe Biden says he's determined to get relations with China back on track. China's leader, Xi Jinping, has arrived in San Francisco for a summit of nations from the Asia-Pacific region. Biden and Xi will meet for only the second time since Biden became president, and the stakes are high for both sides. Biden has said the U.S. is not seeking to distance itself from China. Now, let's speak to DW's William Glucroft, uh, who's joining us from Berlin, and correspondent Fabian Kretschmer, who's covering this story for us from Beijing. William, let's start with you. Uh, this is a highly anticipated meeting between the U.S. and Chinese leaders. What sort of expectations are there surrounding it? Highly anticipated. It's also Xi's first visit to the United States in about six years. And it's not even to Washington, the American capital, it's to San Francisco. That has a certain diplomatic image to it that actually both leaders have to travel somewhere to meet. It's very important for diplomatic protocol, which is something very important, of course, to both sides, but China in particular. Um, what the expectations are just really from all sides that these two leaders just talk. Um, anytime there's major state uh, leadership meetings, you know, it's more about the symbolism, it's more about the fact that they just get together into a room and, and, and talk face to face more than what actually comes out of it, which I think all sides and all analysts are really saying we should have very low expectations for any major breakthroughs, but just coming to an understanding and making sure, as we've heard in that report, that cooler heads prevail with the many areas of tension uh, that face the U.S. China's relationship right now. Fabian, the U.S. president says he's interested in restoring military communication with China. Is that something China wants to? Well, in theory, actually, it, is, it should be in China's um, uh, interest to restore the military to military communication. However, when you look at China's actions, um, there were actually quite mixed signals. So, for example, during several instances, uh, China has not um, responded when the U.S. side reached out and asked for military to military communication. Also, what ma makes things uh, more difficult is that China right now does not even have a um, minister of defense because uh, the, the last minister of defense has been disappeared, uh, possibly investigated for corruption. But let me stress this very clearly. I mean, this is really crucial, um, especially over the issue of the South China Sea and also the issue of Taiwan. There were very many um, dangerous incidents, uh, dangerous maneuvers, always involving Chinese fighter jets and also Chinese uh, ships that uh, could have, uh, you know, escalated rather quickly. So military to military um, uh, communication is really, really important to prevent any further escalation. F Fabian, let me just uh, put this to you as well. The, uh, the U.S. is busy dealing with the wars in Ukraine and Gaza. Can Joe Biden expect any cooperation from China in addressing those conflicts? Well, only to some degree. I mean, um, we have consistently seen that China is um, positioning itself um, in, according to its long-term um, uh, strategic goals. And uh, in the conflict or in the war in Ukraine, th this has meant basically uh, being relatively close with uh, Russia. Um, they have um, supported Russia ri rhetorically and, you know, uh, Putin and Xi have met uh, uh, and, you know, celebrated their friendship. Why? Because they have uh, shared political goals, namely um, opposing the, the Western world order. And that, you know, weighs heavier than, you know, really doing su something substantial in terms of pressuring Russia to end this war. Um, for the um, uh, conflict in Gaza, I mean, yeah, China does not have any interest that this um, um, conflict spreads any further and um, also wants it to end. But on the other hand, um, you know, it will not probably um, suspend uh, military co um, support towards Iran because Iran is a very important source of energy. So it is really very tricky to, um, to, to, to um, get China to pressure uh, um, Iran, for example, because, I mean, yeah, uh, as I said, uh, China is very ambivalent interests. And so I'm expecting more of like, quote unquote, peace loving rhetoric, but mm. not so much in terms of substantial actions. And William, uh, we know that there are massive tensions between Beijing and Washington, but the American and Chinese economies are still closely interlinked. How does trade factor into this meeting between the Chinese and American leaders? Well, it must be huge. Uh, they are interlinked, less so than they have been historically due to the Trump era tariffs that have continued through the Biden administration to the detriment most economists uh, will say 
to both countries. It's a hit to the American economy and the American taxpayer as well. And as we've seen, trade, economic, financial tools, these have become replacement tools of power for countries like the United States, a replacement for military power. It's a way to, to leverage power around the world to get countries to bend to their will without using military power. And that's something that's going to come up, especially as American business leaders would like to meet with the Chinese leader as well to talk about that economic relationship, because there's a lot of money to be made in business in China right. and China's interest, given the uh, economic okay. woes that China's currently facing. William, thank you very much. That was DW's William Glucroft there here in Berlin and correspondent Fabian Kretschmer in Beijing. Thank you very much to you both.